So, you want to be a naval officer. It's a demanding, challenging, and rewarding profession. You face the longest training program given by the Canadian Armed Forces. The standards are very high. And if you think you can handle the job, it's full speed ahead all the way. Break off. Break off. Now. 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 For all potential officers of the Naval Operations Branch of the Canadian Forces, professional training begins here at the Naval Officer Training Center, Esquimalt, British Columbia. At NOTC, all Naval officers learn the essentials of the common knowledge they must have, be they bridge watchkeepers or marine engineers. In a simulated emergency aboard the shore trainer HMCS Tumult, trainees learn the techniques of repairing damage to a ship at sea. One of the greatest dangers at sea is fire. Under the guidance of experienced engineering personnel, you learn the art of combating a variety of fires. Some of you will be fortunate enough to experience the thrills and demands of sail training on board the Navy's beautiful sail training catch, HMCS Oriole. In her, you will experience the special teamwork and respect for the sea that only sail can teach. Professional training for both engineering and upper deck officers alternates between classroom instruction and practical experience at sea. Major compartments, and you'll be on your own to complete the diagram, labeling each compartment as appropriate. This group of trainees have just completed their first phase of training ashore and are being introduced to their first destroyer. Over the coming weeks, they will get to know her intimately. Power is supplied from the ship and all the generators are sufficient to supply a small city of 10,000 people. In this phase of training, they will learn the elements of seamanship, living and working under the same conditions as the sailors they will someday lead. Two standing back to back and one standing over here. You've got four people standing in the inside of the cerebral passing out ammunition. Takes the round out of these trays, jams it up in. The ship's engineering officer conducts the trainee on a tour through the engine room, while a marine engineering officer at a more advanced stage of training conducts tests in the boiler room. During this first phase at sea, seamanship training is heavily emphasized. Complex tasks, such as rigging a jack stay for the transfer of stores or personnel, are practiced regularly and soon run with extreme precision and efficiency. As a precautionary measure, the ship's diver stands by to ensure complete safety. Thus, with careful ship handling and well-drilled teamwork, our men inevitably arrive safe and dry. Start the flow. Lower away together. Boat work is another essential. Officers under training learn to launch, recover, and man the sea boat. And, of course, a quick pull around the Go. ship helps them keep in shape. Go. The Go. 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 The forward, Recovery of the boatload of men is a critical evolution. It must be closely supervised and carefully run. I give this... Um briefing to all the Mars 4s when they join Yukon, uh, just to make sure that they know exactly where they stand, because it's a little difficult sometimes to fit into a wardroom for the first time where a great number of tra traditions are being conducted and you are not quite sure of those traditions. The wardroom is rather a unique place. We have a, um, a very true saying, and that is that 
uh, what happens in the wardroom stays in the wardroom when you leave the wardroom. Boy, speed kilo. Speed kilo. Come on, let's move. Come on. It's a busy schedule. There are signal flags to learn and competitions to win. Better. The unavoidable routine of cleaning stations helps to ensure the term ship shape. The ship is proudly kept free of scars through constant scraping and painting. And there is even time to join the chow line for a plentiful sampling of the much appreciated chef's delight. Kill the lights, will you, Al? Yes, the hours are long, and the morning comes quickly. Your ship is a self-contained city with her own barber and even her own laundry. It all becomes familiar very quickly. The first thing that we're going to look at is an error called perpendicularity. After completing their common training, engineering and upper deck officers branch out to their respective specialties. In this case, it's the index class. These officers are learning the intricacies of the marine sextant as part of their introduction to the art of navigation. Coming up, wheel over, sir, stand by. Then it's back to sea. The familiar coastal minesweepers offer excellent training in pilotage navigation. What's the depth going to be? The depth at the anchorage position is going to be 72 feet, sir. Very good. Plus three feet, plus five feet of tide, 77 feet. Zero, five, nine. Recommend slow stern, both engines. Slow stern, both engines. Slow stern, both engines. In addition to navigation exercises, you learn to react to emergencies. In this case, a simulated man overboard. Alertness and skillful ship handling are the key, and it takes lots of both to maneuver a 46-meter minesweeper precisely alongside the Kisby ring. Everything up to now has been preparation for the final phase of this half of your training. On board these destroyers, you learn to maneuver a 2,000-ton vessel so that it becomes second nature. Range to guide. Range to guide, 1,480 yards. Next ahead. Range next ahead. Range next ahead, 720 yards. What course is the guide offered to now? 180, sir. Can you see the knuckle left in the wake by the guide? Yes, sir. When do you propose to alter course? When the knuckle is um, a beam or a bridge, sir. That sounds right. Steer 330. Steer 330. The orders you give will be instantly transmitted into action throughout the ship. This course will experience much of its training in southern climes. In the waters off San Clemente, California, the ship gets the opportunity to test her gunnery team against a simulated shore target.
sonar, and radar, two essential sensors of a warship. These combat systems engineers are undertaking the complex task of repairing a radar display. Less complex, but still demanding. Instruction in machine work is provided for marine engineering students. It's a full schedule for all hands. And the first foreign port of the cruise, San Diego, California, is a welcome sight. The first shore leave is even more welcome. And perhaps your itinerary will take you to the many colorful attractions of San Diego's famous Sea World. The weekend passes all too quickly, and now it's back to sea. Jimmy at uh, 286 at uh, 1,320 yards. Roger. And Iraqi Reef here is at uh, 128 at uh, 2,600 yards. Roger. Okay, good fix. Minute 10 has us. Two cables to starboard attack. Right. Recommend we steer. Two six five three game. Great job. These officers in the destroyer's operations room are navigating the ship by radar alone. Using this technique of blind pilotage, a warship can travel in confined waters at any time of the day or night. To a new course of three zero zero, sir. In one minute, sir. We're two cables to wheel over to starboard now, sir. Seamanship is not ignored. Officers here are being taught to prepare the ship to be taken in tow by another destroyer. Effective communications are essential when transferring messenger lines and the hawser between ships to prevent them from fouling or breaking. Give me a cable hook then. Oh. Manually handling the lines is necessary to provide the flexibility required for a smooth transfer and to prevent tension being applied prematurely. It's not all work, however. The quarterdeck hosts a wide variety of activities, including small arms practice and various exercises in physical fitness. Once a week, there is usually a quarterdeck barbecue sometimes followed by a friendly game of uckers in the pool. Lessons 21 to 25. Since the squadron is heading for Latin America, Spanish lessons are piped throughout the ship. Well, not everyone's a linguist. Yeah. Panama is the next port of call. In a diplomatic exchange, a group of Canadian junior officers have joined this merchant ship for her transit to the famous locks of the Panama Canal. Back at sea, the officer of the day qualifying board tests this officer's ability to cope with emergencies in harbor. You're asleep in your cabin, as of the day, it's 2 o'clock in the morning and you're satisfied everything's fine in the ship. When you're given a shake by the bosun's mate who tells you 
that a man has just fallen down the hatch from the upper deck into the main cafeteria. What action are you going to take and what are you going to do about it? The first thing I do is uh, get up, get dressed and go to the scene, go to the hatch and determine if someone actually has been injured and it's not just a, a story unfounded in fact. Bear's whistle, turn to leave. <laughs> I recommend you rest with those. Only the fittest will survive tomorrow. As the ships proceed south, they approach the equator and enter the domain of King Neptune. <laughs> Even the squadron commander does not outrank Neptune. This disregard for your ocean so blue requires a judgment to be issued by you. Judgment comes to all this day. I sentence you to dunking free. a distinctly different foreign port. As emissaries of Canadian goodwill, you may be called upon to provide an honor guard in a wreath-laying ceremony. The head of the Ecuadorian Naval Academy has extended invitations to ship's officers. More goodwill and protocol. We wish you this, one, this symbol for your Navy, and we wish you all the luck on the sea. Thank you very much. But it isn't only duty that prevails on this foreign tour. Once leave has been granted, it is usually accompanied by a variety of well-planned tours bound to capture and enrich the imagination. Uh, which means the, the hitching post of the sun. This tour takes us to the fabulous city of Machu Picchu in the heart of the Peruvian Andes. Then, a most rewarding trip to the fabled Galapagos Islands, a living cross-section of the Darwinian theory of evolution. No matter how fascinating the ports of call and how busy the schedule, after many weeks away, home port becomes the next major goal. Entry to home waters marks the completion of the cruise and the completion of the course. As the ship nears Esquimalt, the cold waters of the Straits of Juan de Fuca make the equator seem a long way south indeed. For many months, these officers have undergone exacting training. Many of the friends they began training with are not here today. Those that make it are awarded the Certificate of Competency Level 1. This marks the first major milestone in their professional career. From here, it's on to the Naval Operations Course in Halifax and their first operational ship where they will be. Full speed ahead, all the way. <laughs> 